Welcome to Unknown. I'm Brian Webb with Trenton Hooker. On this show, we will explore the oddities of life, the bizarre, the mysterious, the sometimes unsettling. We will ask questions, hope to get some answers, and take you along for the ride. And today, we're going to start with one of our favorite topics, 3i Atlas. 3i Atlas has fascinated us for months when it was first discovered. Now, is it a gigantic icy rock? or possible sign of an alien intelligence. NASA today finally having a live stream event, which it says are new images, trying to answer that question. Their conclusion, it's a comet. We want very much to find signs of life in the universe. In fact, just a few months ago, we were with you and we talked about what we think might be the, the, the signal from, from ancient life on the surface of Mars, from our amazing machines that have been roving the planet for 30 years to look for those things, that, that is something that's really important for us to, to, to learn about and discover. It could be an amazing discovery if and when we can confirm that. But 3i Atlas is a comet. Harvard professor Avi Loeb has been discussing this for months and also his scientific work identifying at least 12 anomalies with 3i Atlas. He joins us now. Dr. Loeb, pleasure again to have you, sir. Hi, doctor. Can you tell us your reaction to uh, this event that NASA had? Uh, Thanks for having me. Um, An hour before the event, I was asked by a reporter, Uh, what do I expect? And I said, I don't expect big news. Uh, NASA will repeat uh, the official mantra that 3 i Atlas is a natural comet and that they were unable to process the data until now because of the government shutdown. Um, I expect the high-rise image to show a fuzzy ball of light uh, like the Hubble image did, Uh, but I hope to be surprised. And I must say that I was not surprised. This was exactly what we heard. And uh, in particular, um, there were a number of images obtained by various uh, missions, uh, NASA missions, uh, and the collection of images presented, uh, as well as uh, some spectroscopic data, include fuzzy images uh, that do not add much uh, insight to uh, the properties of Three Atlas. Uh, uh, they um, marginally, they have some marginally new information, uh, but they don't address the anomalies, the twelve anomalies that I pointed out, and there was no mention. Uh, of the primary puzzles that are associated with 3 Atlas, uh, including the, the two most important ones, uh, the mass being orders of magnitude larger than the previous two interstellar objects. Uh, based on the size estimate we have, the diameter is um, so much larger that uh, it, the mass is a million times more than the first interstellar object, Oumuamua, and a thousand times more than the second, to Iborisov. And given, given the limited uh, reservoir of material in interstellar space, uh, why have we not seen a million Oumuamuas or a thousand Borisovs before seeing 3 i Atlas? Uh, that's an, an important question that they don't even mention. Uh, also, the alignment of its trajectory with the plane of the planets around the sun. You might say that's a rare coincidence, uh, but that's what made it an easy target for so many NASA observatories, and they should have acknowledged the coincidence, the unusual, the puzzling fact. The point is that they are driven by the desire to say, you know, it, it's a rare object, but it's pretty much similar to objects we know about. There is nothing really surprising. And what I would like them to to say is a a completely different thing. I want them to say, well, we know about uh, comets in the solar system, but this one has a number of puzzling properties. And that's what makes it a very interesting subject for uh, future research for us to figure out those things because we don't understand them. Why is it so difficult for scientists to say there are things we don't understand. They just want to pretend that it's similar to what we've seen before rather than emphasize what we don't understand. Doctor, you've gone over some of those anomalies. The one that struck me, because I'm a simple-minded guy here on planet Earth, is that changing tail. It's in the front. It's in the back. It's there. It's gone. Is that one of the main things that um, has stood out to you? Yeah, and in fact, there was um, an anti-tail in July and August, and then the claim was that we see the development of a tail uh, just for a brief period of time during September, and then in October, we couldn't look at it, and after it passed uh, 
close to the sun, we now see both an anti-tail and a tail. Now, the tail is obviously the result of any material being swept up by either the solar radiation or uh, the solar wind. And there are arguments that maybe this is an ion tail. In other words, that this is gas that we that is swept up. I don't have an issue with whether it's what it is, gas or dust, it doesn't really matter. But but the, the understanding of the anti-tail towards the sun, the fact that the jet I mean, there was one amateur astronomer that uh, noticed, uh, I mean, imaged it, and you could see it going a million kilometers away from the object. Uh, and so there are these jets, and there were seven of them in one of the images. And um, what is strange about the jets is that they are tightly collimated, and the object is supposed to rotate every 16 hours. So then the question is, why isn't that rotation smearing the jets? You would expect the jet to be sort of uh, wiggly, uh, where it points in different directions at different times because of the rotation of the object. We don't see that. Again, a puzzle needs to be explained. I'm not saying that necessarily that demonstrate that we're dealing with thrusters that are technological or anything like that. I'm just saying there are aspects of this object that are puzzling. And why not be curious about the puzzles rather than uh, be arrogant about our expertise in recognizing comets, you know, which is, you know, it's the opposite of what the public really wants to hear. Avi, I want to ask you real quick, coming up in a few weeks, there's a new film coming out, a new documentary called Age of Disclosure. No, it's actually uh, tomorrow. It's actually tomorrow. Thank you. We'll uh, have that corrected. But again, Age of Disclosure coming out and the topic of conversation with UAPs and the government's role in that. Now, I want to ask you as as far in as we are in to the second Trump administration, what is your read for the temperature right now with discussing UAPs? Do you feel like there is progress being made? I mean, I know that Representative Anna Paulina Luna has been working very closely with you on this topic, but do you feel like we're going to be having a close re resolution to answers and that whistleblowers can come through to have the protections to talk about what they might know that is of national security and American interest? Yeah, so the answer to your question really depends on what is out there, whether the government has uh, important information that the public doesn't know about. And if it does, my sense is that we will get closer. This, this, these coming months, uh, you know, there, there is a good chance we will get closer to learning more about it. Um, but there is also the possibility that there is not much there that, in fact, uh, uh, the, the material retrieved from crash sites uh, is related to crash sites of, uh, you know, uh, uh, technologies produced by adversarial nations. And, and, and that's uh, so, so there was a cover story invented by the intelligence agencies relating to that as uh, alien uh, technology just to, um, you know, hide the fact that we know much more about uh, adversarial nations than, than we want them to, to realize. So the question is whether it's a cover story for just uh, human-made technologies produced by other nations, or we actually have recovered uh, craft that were produced by alien technology from outside the solar system. And I don't know the answer to that because I, ha I haven't had access to any such data. If it exists, I think we will get to it. Uh, it would be impossible. Um, to hide it forever. Um, and eventually, you know, we we will find it. We will find materials like that. We will find the new objects coming along. We would detect interstellar objects that are technological. There will be no way. It's just like um, the Vatican was unable to hide the fact that the Earth moves around the sun. Ultimately, it was revealed. And the Vatican apologized and said that Galileo was right. In the same fashion, I mean, it's a delay tactics. If they have something and don't want and hide it from the public, it's it's just a delay. Eventually, we will know about it. That's interesting, doctor. So you think eventually human beings will be able to positively identify intelligent life out there somewhere, somehow? Yeah, I'm confident about that. I think it's arrogant also to think that we are 
the most accomplished technological civilization. Um, and it's our duty, it's my duty as a scientist to search for that uh, rather than say we know the answer, it's very unlikely or uh, there is no point in investing funds and let's just search for microbes. Uh, I think we should invest similar level of funding in the search for microbes and the search for uh, technological artifacts. But NASA right now is focusing on microbes and dismissing uh, the the importance of searching for technological uh, signatures, um, in, at least in terms of the funding that they allocate to both tasks. Avi, I want to ask you, too, with this journey that you have been on, in particular, the last few months with 3i Atlas, what, what do you feel like the broader conversation needs to be having in the halls of science among professionals like yourself to where what's next for how we discuss these objects. And I, I remember reading just recently with one of your papers that you put out, you know, the long and short of it, if we're only going to be looking for icy rocks, really, that's, that's what we're going to be finding. But what's the discussion that needs to happen in science moving forward based yeah, on where we're at? It's very simple. Um, just like AI systems are as good as their training data set, I'm suggesting that people who explore objects in the sky should have a training data set that doesn't just include icy rocks, but also includes technological objects. Because we launch such things, and we know about uh, 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, 10% of them having a, a, a planet the size of the Earth, roughly the same separation. And therefore, it's completely reasonable to search for things that we produce but also things more advanced than we produced. And if you include that in the training data set of astronomers looking at objects entering the solar system from interstellar space, we might find it. If you just include comets, they will always talk about comets. Doctor, real quick, we're almost out of time. If and when, I always ask you this, will we have a final decision on 3i Atlas? Oh, I think by the time it gets closest to Earth, uh, on December 19th, uh, just before the holidays, we should have a flood of data by then from ground-based telescopes and the Hubble and Webb. So, you know, then we will pretty much know a lot about it. So uh, not much longer to wait for. And let's just hope we don't get any unwanted gifts. for the <laughs> <laughs> I think definitely we'll leave, our, uh, yeah, our Christmas. He's going to leave us with that um, ominous yes, thought. Always. Doctor, always you're great. A pleasure. Thank you, sir. Dr. Avi Loeb. Thank you, sir. No, you're a very busy man. Thanks for having See me. See you soon. Okay. Thank you, sir. Wow. What a, what a discussion so far and where we're at with that. It just uh, blows my mind every talk time we talked to Dr. And we're going to find out more about it here uh, in just yes. a minute from another renowned yes. theoretical Dr. physicist. Dr. Michio Kaku yes. is going to be joining us in just a moment. And we're going to get his take. A little different view, but uh, still always fascinating. And still always make sure you're set fasten your seat belts and put up your trade table. Yeah. You've got a yeah. long flight ahead. Will ET phone home? I think that's <laughs> what we're trying to find out today.